So you have your competition class that you have, uh, which I've been a part of. I've been very lucky to be train in that room. And then there's also, I'm assuming, what you and your original uh, crew back when you were tra uh, training and competing, you had your competition class. What, was, like, yeah. what, what was, what's, what's the big difference from that, that class and your class now? Because yours is very structured. It's very detailed. You do a lot of deliberate things. There's always a lesson plan. You see, I feel like you. I feel like you learned a few things from before, and you implemented a completely yeah, new structure. Well, here. like I said, like as as a when I transitioned to a full time coach, <laughs> I actually, you know, the truth is, like it, it was back in the day. It was everybody was kind of the same, right? You do a warm up, you learn two or three techniques, and you roll. Right, that was the fundamental structure. That was it. Warm up, you know, your typical line drills, one or two things, maybe three techniques, maybe, and then roll. It was a lot of rolling. But, uh, yeah, and, and you can evolve and get really, really good, but it's a longer process, I think. You know, it's a lot of self-discovery when you're doing a lot of rolling. Like, you figure a lot of things out on your own. But it takes time. It takes a lot of time, I think, in my mind. But that was the, you know, this, that's what we knew. That's what we were taught. That's what we understood. Okay, warm up, two, three things, roll. And we did that for many, 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 many years. Up until... Was, just, was it just jiu-jitsu or was this like strikes and MMA involved? No, this is jiu-jitsu. I'm just referring to the jiu-jitsu class, mm -hmm. right? Because okay. the MMA class was separate. Gotcha. We had an MMA class from 7 to 8.30. And then when we were, this is the, that's the other thing. Like we, we trained for like four hours on average, you know, because it was like an hour and a half of MMA. And then we would put the gi on and then do jujitsu for an hour, an hour and a half. Right. So it, it was a lot of training, a lot of training. But again, we were splitting the the focus and the main focus like the jiu-jitsu was like a cool down almost in a way it was just an additive you know like we the focus was the mma and then we did you know the, the jiu-jitsu afterwards just to you know because we enjoyed rolling around in our geese come on let's not kill ourselves it's fun so that was the way it was back then and it was like that for a very long time and even a lot of academies today still follow that format warm up two three techniques and then roll you know, uh, what changed for me is when I, like, I've started teaching as early as blue belt because there was no black belts. There was no black belts. Our, our professor would come every six months, spend either a week or two, sometimes a month, depending on, on the arrangement. And I need to go back to Brazil. And we were kind of left to our own thing. So, uh, the the main the Shaw Franco the main guy who ran the place he did most of the teaching, but whenever he you know couldn't then it would fall on me because I was kind of like the senior member. So I've been literally teaching classes since blue belt. So it's not like I didn't become the person that I am or the instructor that I am overnight. I've been teaching since blue belt. You know, mm -hmm. so if 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 I have a certain level of skill, it's because I spent a lot of time. I've, like I didn't just start teaching at black belt. No, I I've been teaching since blue belt. I've been helping out since blue belt, right? So I've always had this, you know, this thing where I was helping or either running the class or helping with the class. Um. So, but once I opened my first academy, I was following the same format. But the one thing that changed for me was uh of course always staying up to date with the sport always always in the f like what's going on it, of course it was harder back then there was no internet you know it only exploded you know in, in the late 2000s i think it just went crazy but before that it was like magazines and vhs tapes right so the the, the it was harder to stay up to date once the internet came in and boom, it was crazy. And then of course, that's again, why the sport grows, why the sport grew so much. Uh, it's a funny thing that I didn't, th didn't think of that until now, but the internet, the internet changed the sport. You can learn, you know, you can pick up techniques and learn things and be involved and be aware of what the main, main fighters are doing. Like no problem. 
right? So besides being, besides being like heavily, um, you know, in the forefront of what's going on with the sport that I love, the one thing I can say for sure that changed things was my wife. She's a teacher. Oh. Right? Yeah. She's a teacher. And she lesson plans. Uh. Right? She plans her lessons. And I was like, oh, maybe I should do the same. So I started okay, time out one second. Yeah. Time out one second. Because this is a very common thing I see with a lot of friends. Like my peers too. It's like, like they have to teach a class. And it's just like they just, they just waltz on in. They, don't, they haven't thought about anything. They just throw a random technique out there and then you go roll. Like I've seen this happen countless times. So it's like the, the fact that you just prepare lessons before and that that was like a that was a, like, yeah, that was a big game changer for me. Yeah, that was a big thing for me. I kind of when I paid when I noticed like that clicked for me, and I was like, oh, maybe I should do the same. So I started planning all my lessons. All right. The other thing that changed for me is like okay. Uh, I forget when, but there was this understanding is like how do coaches like basketball coaches football coaches how do they do their job like they don't yeah. just like okay guys uh scrimmage <laughs> no they run plays right they run plays over and over yeah. again so the drilling aspect of it right okay guys you got to drill the game the play you got you got to drill your game plan Right. Okay. Do it again. All right. Run the play again. Run the play again. Run the play again. Okay. And then at the end, okay, let's scrimmage. Right. Because it's also safer. If you have football players scrimmage, scrimmaging all the time, they're going to get hurt. So they just run plays, right? They run the plays. So I, I, that kind of made sense for me too. I was like, huh? All right. So I started structuring it more as a professional coach instead of like the old school. Okay. Let's, you know, warm up two techniques and roll so I, I think that i'm only scratching the surface honestly i think i could do a much better job but when you are juggling uh you know a whole bunch of other things it's kind of hard to just focus on the sport if i could just focus on, as on being a coach i would try to be more innovative i try to be a little bit more creative i try to you know how do i get these crossover concepts going you know and be a professional coach and i have been lucky enough to be a professional coach but i, I think there's uh you know there's a there's a learning curve here i think that we can we can get better 